p.m. And we're just looking over some of the uh, warrants to see about signing them. Um, I wanted to make you aware of this. That right there, it's outside the door on the on the right as you go out. Oh, good. Yeah. So cops must be here. We notified authorities to hopefully come take care of it. So it's it's everywhere. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, just catching up on the emails. Uh, maybe some of that. Okay. So we got this printed out. And we're just going to go through some of the warrants here real quick. supposed to sort of not leave leave an abrupt edge in a you're driveway. supposed to yeah okay because your plow will chew that right off for you <laughs> yeah i just you mean down to prospect well yeah i was at the it's interesting because when i go into the village you no, know, i go across past the vets down that way and where they it's, you know it's just a well, which the vets tree? coming out or the vets come out on the Eden, yeah. That's not Eden. That's whatever that little funny yeah, stream is. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't gone up that one yet. Yeah. I went up the rest of them. Are they okay? Oh, they're as good as this one, huh? Oh, okay. Sam <laughs> <laughs> been hanging around with you guys too much. I'm starting to notice these That's things. Good. <laughs> That's good. That's perfect. I want to Jeez. commend you on <laughs> That's good, good awareness. Oh of, boy. Of, Something else to complain about. Jeez. I will go on that street tomorrow. Though. Right I don't know what the name of it is, but yeah, yeah, I know what it is. It's that little funny street. <laughs> okay. Because that's already been paid by the state. They paved all the way up to almost a roundabout on top of the hill by my place. So that's all been paid. So they wouldn't yeah. be leaving it for no reason with a ramp. No, well, yeah, they paved that at the same time. That's what we did. You see How's the Prospect Street? Okay. <laughs> I think you better take a look. I bet you better go drive around Prospect Street. Just, okay. Yeah. You know, a friend told me it's like a, uh, I don't want to say it, Boar's Biscuit. Okay. Just drive out there and you can take a look at it sometimes. Yeah. You know, but um, what was I going to say? A uh, senior moment here. No, well, they're going to come back and, I mean, you know, they're just. I, I got a feeling there's so much paving, there's so much construction work going on that if you can get people to do it right, it's going to be a miracle. And that's a problem. One of the reasons why you don't want to start paving to a thing because state won't let them pave. Yeah. Okay. You know, the state puts off until June, maybe July. Depends on how the money is, you know. Right, that. right. No. Then it's hot. Okay, Jesse's on her way. Excellent. Okay, let's. Uh, okay, so we'll. Uh, let me just finish looking through these warrants right here. I usually I get to see them earlier, but well, uh, know, right. we just had the circumstances that just made it so it didn't happen. So, Ron, how was the training? It's good. We did a um, initial onboarding last week for you know tour of the office introducing the staff and kind of getting used to the office i gave her a choice of my office or her office she wasn't sure uh, they're both kind of flexible back and forth um but she was coming from a an interior office with no windows so i figured i could i could give up my fishbowl at least she can see trees if she wanted to uh, but no decision on that today we went over um training with Nemrec for two hours with Kim and Krista, myself, and Jim Noyes. Oh, okay. Uh, How do you feel that was? We're trying to um, explore the, you know, the efficiencies of Nemrec and what kind of reports the select board should be looking at and trustees should be looking at and how, you know, staff basically can monitor things and produce reports that you know what you're looking at kind of it's like a short story the long story of that is you know training 
Jennifer and uh, having Jim Noyes be comfortable with the reports, possibly giving him access to Nemric so he can pull reports when he wants it for the library trustees. And, um, you know, just making sure everybody that needs to know has the answers and, and or at least know what the question is. So if, if you knew, if you know what the question is and you know who to ask it of, you can get an answer or you know what the question is and you have access to the software and then you can get your own answer. So right. Right. Cynthia's point with the select board and the, and the board of trustees was that she can make a presentation to the boards and say, hey, this is what the NIST system does. This is what other boards look at. And if you want to get those reports, um, you should get some of these monthly, maybe get some of these annually. And here's what you look at when you get those reports. And she'll, she actually will be looking at some dates to meet with you and go over that with the Hyde Park Select Board. I, I don't know if Jim is gonna to wanna to do that for the library trustees as well, but we have this software, we play, 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 pay plenty of money for it and the board would benefit from you know, asking good questions and, and having good reports. Yeah, that, that'd be great because I don't, you know, it's the old you don't know what you don't know. Um, so, so that kind of presentation would be would be really helpful and probably get all of us thinking about information that it would be nice to have. Yeah, and it's it, it's almost as simple as okay. Every month, I know I'm going to get some reports, and I'm going to pick on one or two things in those reports. That's what that's what my job is going to be. I'm going to track this particular item month to month, and that's going to that's what I'm going to focus on. Somebody else may want to look at the whole thing. Other people may want to look at you know highway salt usage only <laughs> um, but at least you you'll have a regular report that's accurate and then you can uh, you know track it all or track some of it on your own as as elected officials and if you see something out of whack um, because it's too high or too low then you'll say hey this is this is not regular why, why what's going on here now staff's job really is to raise those issues with you before you ask the question. So for example, if you if we see something that's trending, we should be able to highlight that and bring it to you with an explanation. Right. On the, on the flip side, if we're not tracking something or explaining something, you should have some expectations about what is normal and when to ask those questions. So anyway, it's kind of a two, it's a two-way kind of effort. You know, staff should be doing a little more the board members can do a little more, and that's what the Nemec training is all about. Yeah, sounds good to me. It's pain, it was painless, you know. It's two hours, but it was painless. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay. Let me get this We don't have signees. No. No. The the this year yeah. coincides with that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to welcome uh, any changes to the agenda or uh, public comment. So this is push it. We're just got it. Just to let uh, Chastity know, um, Matt Morn is online, Green Mountain Access is online, and I'm online. That's there's no members of the public. Okay. And let's see. So the Vermont League of Cities and Towns Supplemental Life and Pet Insurance Option 100% Employee Cost. Why did they Why did they have to go through uh, uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns? It's supposed to be cheaper that way because it's a unit of people. Yeah, it's a group. Yeah, so it's a, it's similar to um, the dental program or. Even even Aflac to a certain degree, where they can offer a different menu of benefits to a group that are cheaper uh, for the employee that way, uh, versus going on the street and buying your own an individual policy. Let's say so, I, and I don't know what I don't know what Madison Madison Life is the insurance company uh, that VLCT selected. They seem to offer different uh, products from time to time, so. About six, seven years ago, they uh, they were called Lincoln Life at that time, but they 
had a rate adjustment on their um, uh, on some benefit. I, I'm I'm drawing a blank at whether it was. Let's say it was reduce some expense, and then they said, "Oh, by the way, because we're reducing this, now we're offering this other product to your employees." You know, it's a it's sort of like this give and take sales thing a little bit. So we do have to be careful about this stuff, if you will. Uh, from the taxpayer's perspective, these are 100% employee costs, so it's optional for the employee. It doesn't cost the taxpayers anything. Um, the additional cost is really just a administrative cost to collect the money from the employees and then combine it in the warrant to pay the insurance company. So that's relatively minor. So that that cost is who, who collects that? And yeah, so we'll do an automatic deduction out of the payroll system and then pay the vendor. So there's a little bit of extra step administratively to, to administer the, the free sort of 100% employee program, but it's really just a, a, a line item automatic deduction that gets posted to the company on a monthly basis. It's not a, there's not a lot of paperwork involved, so to speak. So, um... Is it just for cats and dogs, or can I put my bunny on it? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just yeah. You know, I know. I don't. I don't know. I think it says dogs and cats are treated equally, but yeah, uh, that, uh, that doesn't mean you can't do bunnies. My, my bunny, my them. bunny identifies as a dog. There you go. There you he go. He lays like one. He eats. <laughs> so, hey, just just for questions, um, was was this a request of one of our employees? Uh, Kim specifically wrote an email saying it, it's a good idea to offer it. The employees will, some employees will benefit from it. Uh, VLCT basically did the same thing. Hey, we've got this new thing. Your employees will uh, benefit from it. So it was, it wasn't, it wasn't just VLCT. It was specifically from Kim um, suggesting that the board consider it. Well, it's a free benefit. I mean, it doesn't cost us anything. Yeah, it doesn't cost town yeah. anything. So um, I just need a motion to accept that as well, oh, I'll move it. In a second. Second. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody oppose? Aye. 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 Matt. Matt. Sorry, yeah. I had to unmute myself. Aye. You're good. You're good. You're all the cats and dogs you want. Thank you. Show, and, us, and show us a picture of the ocean. <laughs> in my air, I'm in my. Yeah, they bleeped you out. <laughs> I'm in my Airbnb right now, so you're not going to see much. You're still on vacation? Yeah. My God, do you ever work? I fly home tomorrow. So oh. depressing. <laughs> Don't rush it. Yeah, yeah. 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 take your time. But Chas, the good news is I bought a timeshare, so if you want to use it, you can. Fantastic. All right. So we accepted that. that that's to go in the minutes, please, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Matt's offering his timeshare. All right. Use it away. <laughs> Pets are allowed. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Next thing on the agenda is local emergency management plan uh, annual update. Um, just a point of um, clarification, there was a last minute uh, change to the agenda that I posted on, just barely posted on the, um, I know Brian asked this question already, any changes to the agenda. Um, but if you pull the website agenda off, uh, if you can do that, I, I may be just an adjustment to the order of things versus, I just wanna make sure Brian and I are tracking on the minutes because I'm, I'm taking minutes, but I wanted to follow the last agenda. So there was a couple that, a couple that I had sent out as I was drafting it. Yeah. So do you have the latest one, Brian? I believe, oh, wait a minute, this is life insurance. No, just a minute. I did see it and I did look at it. How many items are on the agenda, Ron? 
Uh, six, maybe? Six. Okay. Well, there's there's more there's about ten. town orders and minutes and things like that. Right. There's 10, ten total items, right? Uh, Jordan's the number 10. Yeah, ten, 10 total was six discussion items, I guess. But I can review what I for the agenda really quick. It's the supplemental life insurance, the bylaw modernization study, the local emergency management plan, ARPA project list discussion, and 2022 zoning amendments. Those are the five main things on the agenda. Okay. Yep, I got it. So I see that I see on here, I've got it here. Um, what got changed on it or just got reorganized, right? I'm, I'm not sure, but you had jumped to the um, LEMP, but I had bylaw modernization as the number three. Okay. Just a or I think it's just an order of things, but yeah. Yeah. But if you want to talk about bylaw modernization, I can do that. That's a action item. Okay. Let's do that. Let's talk about the bylaws. Yeah, so the, a couple of things, two or three things going on um, with bylaw modernization. There's actually a, a congressional bill to have all the states comply with revising zoning to not, be, not preclude housing. A, I guess they've pretty much ignored it for years, but apparently there might be some really top-down stuff forcing towns to um, give up on some of their, their standards. Uh, for example, the one house per 10 acre type stuff is what they're going after. The state of Vermont has been pushing uh, most recently for uh, bylaw flexibility, if you will, in village centers, downtowns. And this grant, uh, which is from the state of Vermont, will allow the town to do a sort of a deep dive in, in some of the anecdotal concerns, I think, from uh, even the planning commission and DRB members themselves where they feel that some of the, the, you know, Hyde Park zoning prevents affordable housing. And I don't know if that's exactly true, but this is the type of report where any of those concerns can start to have some sort of facts behind them uh, and potentially put the bylaw in a good light and, and say, we actually support good housing and, and affordable housing. And, and sort of put the naysayers, not, not in their place, but just put the naysayers at bay a little bit by, you can't just simply say the bylaw is bad. You, this is the kind of study that would actually dig into it and come up with recommendations to, to either recognize the good parts or to make improvements. And if the planning commission gets through this process with the regional planning commission, which is their recommendation after they met last week, that they would have a set of amendments for you to consider uh, hopefully early next year, 2023. And then at that point, you would be adopting a bylaw that is relatively current with these national and state trends uh, where we don't have provisions in the bylaw that prohibit or make it difficult or make it more expensive than it needs to be uh, for good, um, good uh, land development. So the, the planning commission met, they looked at some responses to an RFP and they uh, only had one return, which was the regional planning commission. And Kate Lally and Seth Jensen are the two lead staff people that will work with the town planning commission and bring up uh, recommendations for amendments. Uh, they have about a year and a half to do that. But planning commission last week was pushing the, uh, <coughs> LCPC to get it done sooner. And if the town select board adopts the amendments that are recommended or some of them within the <coughs> grant period, which ends next fall, then the local grant match, which is only 10%, that, that would be waived by the state if you actually adopt the bylaw uh, proposed amendments or some of them. I don't think you have to adopt all of them, but you have to adopt, react to them and get some new ones in place. 
So that's the that's the motion on the table is to award the um, bylaw modernization study grant to the regional planning commission and let them begin their work. I'll have a um, I'll need probably myself or Brian authorized to sign a work contract and any other paperwork with regional planning or and I'll continue to be the grant administrator. But if there's any contracts, then Brian and I can look at those and get those signed. It will be in keeping with the grant terms, of course. So we're not going to we're not going to do anything that's um, not already been presented to the planning commission. The only thing that happened at the last minute, which is a which is a little um, unusual. Uh, we received the planning grant from the state, which is about $10,000 total project. And then the Lamoille County Board of Realtors said, hey, um, we're interested in housing stuff too and making sure that there's no uh, constraints. And you know, we've heard Hyde Park has some stu you know, stuff that needs to be looked at. And you know, to help you look at that, we'll give you $2,500. And the Lamoille County Board of Realtors voted uh, a week or 10 days ago to award the $2,500 to this project. And their only condition is they can't pay towns for some reason. I don't know if it's a conflict of interest potential, but they can pay the LCPC directly. Okay. So, the, the straight, so so I, I, I think what we're going to do is we're going to have a scope of work funded by two different mm -hmm. pots of money, one being the grant and one being the, the donation, I guess, from the Loyal County Realtors. Okay. And Susan had a question. Yeah. <laughs> Dare I ask. Um, so the village has its own zoning stuff. How does this impact the village? Um, we did extra effort um, via email and a face-to-face uh, -face meeting last week with the Village Planning Commission. Uh, Bob Malbon went to their meeting and asked them if they saw any benefit to looking at their bylaw regarding housing constraints and affordability. And Bob's Bob's. Uh, takeaway from the meeting was that they only want to know when roads were going to be paved. They, they, they didn't commit to anything regarding this particular project, even though we were offering the full $2,500 to be applied to the village bylaw. So Bob told me yesterday that he would sort of wait a little while for the village to, to commit or show any interest in this uh, being applied to that village bylaw. And if they don't, then we'll do the $2,500 on the town zoning bylaw and, and make that report a little larger. Gotcha. Okay. So that we could, well, I know what, what, you know, the goal of, of housing and stuff for some time has been to try to get density in the centers of villages, towns, you know, whatever. And, um, if the village isn't participating, I'm 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 just. I, I, well, I'm not. Gonna, if they, if they don't want to speak, that's their problem. Mine is I'm looking at. So what we really would be dealing with is how the town can facilitate affordable housing in the town, not the village. Yeah. Well, that I think that's what Bob's question was because it it didn't seem right to have the town start to look at the village bylaw without the village planning commission saying great we'll take advantage of that thank you very much how do we coordinate and make this happen that was not the response he got so i don't whether we could even consider the village at all or make a note in it that you know someday somebody should look at the village bylaw but it it, it, it was not a welcome welcoming response to bob Right, and I think just just in the in the process of writing up the work, if we don't hear if the village is choosing not to participate, which they're certainly free to do, um, then I just in the work plan that just needs to be clear because I think you you're going to look at developing affordable housing a little differently when you don't have the village involved. 
Yeah, I, I think it's a one way or the other, they should be in the in the report. The question of, you know, could we potentially look at you know individual properties that aren't controlled by the village and try to try to do a mini redevelopment scope of work? I yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just that's obviously needs to be part of the scope of work and the understanding of what we're getting into. Um, because and and I'll um they must have someplace. Let me um I'll I'll put Oh, well, call, why don't you check in? If you're interested, talk to Bob Malbon for a minute. Just see if my relaying of his his feeling from the yeah, meeting okay. is accurate first. Okay. I'll, I'll talk with him and then maybe give Ricky a call. And... Yeah, talk, talk to Bob. And, and I, I'm pretty sure we're, we're waiting to include the village in the scope of work is what we were waiting for. And, and Bob did not tell me to do that after he met with him. OK. So should we wait? Well, no, I think I think we go. I think we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. It's just whether in doing the scope, whether the yeah, village is in it, it or not. It, yeah, yeah, because yeah, we certainly, you know, if they don't want to participate, well, we'll we'll find some. We'll, there are plenty of places along the edges that I'm sure we could do some affordable housing. I mean, I just think going between Hyde Park and North Hyde Park, right? You know, there'd be a there'd oh, probably yeah. be a variety of areas that you could do some really nice housing out there. Absolutely. So yeah. that's what we need. That's what we need to do to get affordable housing. That's what we'll do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but it, it it's also just to just to be to be clear i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to bob but after i talk to bob and and uh, assuming that your interpretation of of uh of his impression is right um i think it makes sense for us to send a letter to the village um you know to carol but then also to copy to ricky and their planning commission to make sure that it's very clear that we're going ahead with this, you know, we have this opportunity um, and we would love to involve the, you know, have the village come along and, and apply it to the village as well. And um, maybe what we need to say, if we don't hear from you, we'll include the village. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah. But just, yeah. Just, so, just so that so that there's a real clear trail so that if then, they don't respond and we go ahead and do it. And then we hear the, how come you didn't win the village in it? You know, because they, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we tried to. Well, let's say that again. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you get, you, you, you try right. and if no, people don't want to do it, yeah. 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 yeah, it's not our fault. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I just want a clear record for everybody that we are trying to, to have them included. Yep, that's a good approach. Should I do a motion? Um, let me see. I'll let's see. I'll move that, that that we um, that the town go ahead and um, and they, and accept and move ahead with the planning process, and that we will uh, we will attempt to have the uh, we will offer the village uh, great opportunities to be involved with that, and that um, is particularly nice because the realtors have have chipped in some money, so that would make it even more feasible to to cover the cost to have the village involved in it. Second. Any other discussion? No? no sounds good. Um, so all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Matt? Aye. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> oppose? Matt wants to do timeshares. <laughs> <laughs> the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. So. Okay, let's see. So what was the next one on yours, Ron? I had uh, the, uh, I guess we could have uh, local emergency management. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so an update on that. Did sure, you every, every April, um, the towns, across the state of Vermont are asked to update this local emergency management plan. Uh, basically after town meeting day, you get new board members, you get new appointments and all that information has to be updated. And then that information is all summarized and provided to emergency responders, the state of Vermont regional planning commission so that there's a good database, current database of who is gonna help out at the emergency operations center during a statewide or countywide disaster. 
and what kind of resources each town has. The Roland is the EMD who is, is really the lead person on the EOC as well as the LEMP. And I think in the past, uh, Brad and Chief Webster have, have taken the lead on this process. I kind of took it away. Um, Brad and I started working together in the last couple of years because there was some data that needed to be updated and I was able to, to do that on my software. So it takes a little bit of effort to do that, but there's um, not a lot of work with that. The bigger part of the LEMP is the um, is is really the the being able to to pull that pull it off. <laughs> so the LA, all the LEMP does is say if something happens, here's what all the pieces are. The EMD is the one that's supposed to follow the LEMP and know that all these people on this list know what to do. And I don't, there's no, no work being done on that piece. So I can very easily update phone numbers and names every April or and any town administrator could do that. But the real problem with the LEMP is that it's not distributed, it's not reviewed, it's not rehearsed. Um, it's sort of an ineffective plan, if you will. So I don't know if that's a mission of Roland to pick up that piece of it or if he wants to work with Don Archbold more to pick that up. But I'm not sure if everybody has a copy of it, for example. I'm not sure everybody knows where the EOC is. I'm not sure that the Brian Shackett, who's the chair of the board, knows that he's the public information officer that has to have prepared statements for Channel 3. You know, So when you actually implement the- <laughs> <laughs> so, You got faith in that. So that's, I guess that's more of a question. We do this every year, every April, we'll update the list, but there's a, actually a whole year of, you know, things that happen. And I think the winging it is sort of the practice a little bit. And I, I'm, I'm always not comfortable with that. Um, but when you're on, you know, when that flood event happened up in, uh, you know, Halloween, there was a lot of scrambling and no organization at the beginning of that event. You know, I had I had to call open the EOC just to even get people to talk to each other. That not my role. And that I wasn't on there then, but I know. No, no, I was talking about Brad. Brad was doing it, and he yeah. was occupied by other things. You know, so there was no practice. There was no practice. You know, we fixed that by telling Brad to give up that role. But now that role is back to Roland, and I'm pretty sure that if you look at the LEMP and talk to people that are listed they're not exactly sure what they're going to do when, when they are well, called. It's easy to run what you're going to do. I mean, I had training in both of the floods we had over in Warsaw. And I was I went to training on that and everything. And the thing it comes down to is they suggested to me, and I went to Newport and got them, was Caltags to mark every site that you've got. With Caltags, takes pictures of them. So you know which number is which, how deep right. they are, how long they are. I mean, it's not a real rocket scientist to do that, but you've got to take the time to do it. And, well, and, and some of these people, I mean, when you go to bed at six o'clock at night, I, I, I work during the day, so I can't do nothing at night when somebody goes to bed at six o'clock. I know, and that, I think that's part of the problem. I'm seeing that with, a, not, not that you're the problem, but the, the fact that some of this stuff just takes time. You know, like uh, there's no way that the Hyde Park road foreman during the you know, Halloween storm should be calling me looking for cones or, or having to tell me that he doesn't have enough road closure signs. That, that is a, sort of a failure of this kind of a, of a plan. And well, I'll have to go out and buy some cones and stuff. So, so is there a way of pulling everybody together and just have a meeting just to discuss this? And then uh, everybody has some sort of an idea of what they're, uh, you know, establish the role. And then um, I also saw a lot of voids in there as far as equipment to handle uh, certain you know, disasters and stuff. Yeah, sure. And, yep. and that there was quite a bit of X's that, in there that weren't available. And I was wondering if uh, when you brought everybody together, if there was some way to uh, find out who's got that equipment 
and if we could gain access to it, had some sort of a written agreement, if uh, if this, this, and this happened, you know, a disaster happened, that we'd be able to uh, access that equipment, even if it's working with the Johnson Farm and Garden down there, or uh, uh, one of the other rental places, that type of thing, that there's already a pre-established uh, agreement that we could, uh, or our contacts at least you're, down there, so you can get to it. You're better off in an event like that to go to Essex Riddle. Well, either one, either one, yes, uh, whatever. Right. But the key. Well, we don't know what event it's going to be. Well, <laughs> it mean, could be any event. You don't know that. That's I funny mean... because you know what you know what the most important thing about a flood for FEMA is. You know the most important thing. How much does it cost? I would hope not. Get people. Uh, pictures, 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 uh, pictures, pictures, pictures. Right. I would want to. I had people, I myself. Guess. When Irene was going on, I had two other people, which was Francis Heward yep. and and um, and not no, not Francis Heward, excuse me, but it's Charlie MacArthur and George Fabro. Them two were riding around taking pictures of everything yep. for us. I don't care if you got six men up that garage. I don't care if you got a dozen men up that garage. They're not going to get around because they're most interested in getting saving people that right. are getting. Right. Out. Exactly. So they're they're there. Yeah. So you got to take, and I don't care if it's me. Right. I can't get around to all the sites. Right. It's going to take more than one person. We had table over there lined up just like this. Tina, myself, and the, uh, Charlie and George. There was four of us in that room. They locked us in there for two days, and we went through every picture. Wrote everything down that wasn't That's wrote down. Yep. And when FEMA come in, they looked at them pictures and they got their check in six months. Document, document, document. Pictures, yeah. pictures, yeah. pictures. That freaking guy told me, I don't know how many times he said that. So I think a meeting is a good idea. I mean, it might not be a flood. I mean, I mean there's lots of disasters it, it, that can happen. It would, not just it a would flood. take, I mean, you know, you as a select board member to be going out there with another select board member and taking pictures because. Sure. If you've got 34 sites. That's great, but I didn't know that. No, I but could, I'm just so saying. I think that's why I, we need to have this. I, I could take pictures and see you actually follow me. Yeah. Actually, be covering it well, well, right. and I could leave it in and film it. We had, we had a lot of pictures that were double, triple. Sure. Sure. Okay. And, but and it was done. great. Yep. But, I mean. Well, isn't, isn't that the whole thing, Rolly, that you want to do with the cow tags? Because they were big, so that you put a, you put a tag in that would site. be That would right. be somebody's job. Yeah. Probably whoever's doing it to coordinate so many cow tags. You put the cow tag on the site, on a tree, on a grade stake. Yeah, something, right. Whatever. And then you write down, this one is eight feet deep. This is 200 feet long. And there's six culverts gone. Right. And then when you show up with your picture, you've got the cow tag, so you're you right. know, in the picture so you can reference. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what they told me is really it's it's you know, yes, it's good training, but it don't take two weeks to do the training. Ron, do you think that Don would be interested in pulling all the people together and that are on that's on the plan and, and organizing that uh, that meeting? Yeah, I, well, that's 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 what I was thinking is having one person, uh, and I, it might even have to be one of those Saturday morning things for two hours with breakfast. I don't know to get people out of the regular work schedule. Or there you go. Yeah, yeah. Roland makes great pancakes. <laughs> yeah, Roland can man the griddle, and Brian, Roland, Brian will bring the syrup. But I can. I'll, I'll talk to Roland. Roland or Ron can talk to Don. I don't know what. Roland, you want me to reach out to Dawn or and see if I'm she's. I'm gonna reach there. out to her because if you want to do it this week, because no, 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 no. we got a few weeks out. There's no, yeah. we don't have to yeah. do it instantly. We yeah, just, to... just, just having this conversation and and having the board commitment to like, try to make something happen, even if it's just once a year after you adopt the LEMP, just so people can get back together and see what changes are and just. And, right. and move and move on after that. You yeah. need the fire chief. You need both fire chiefs. North Lake Park. Right. So if you if you, if you put the need out there, a ways you'd have a better luck of coordinating. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no, I think I think everybody on the LEMP would get noticed, and then you know, just as an enticement, keep the meeting short and have food. <laughs> right. Yeah. Should we have, should we have a document and 
that we add and say, I mean, Roland, I'm not picking on your cow tags, but it wouldn't take much to throw together a document that just says, you know, emergency management document, you know, site number X, Y, Z. So that way you're, you're labeling a site and you have something to represent behind it rather than. Yeah, we'll have somebody taking notes, Matt. It'll be just like a paper you make up for the fire drill in a building or something, you know, something like that. Right. Okay. And that can come out of that meeting too. Right. I mean, you can figure out all the scenarios that you could possibly have dealt with. Some of these people will have the answers to it because they've already lived it. And, that type and of thing. I had one FEMA guy tell me that was an older guy that's been in the business. He, they pulled him out of retirement. And he told me every event, every event is different. So prepare yourself to change 100% of the time. He's right. Oh, yeah. You can train, 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 train the next. Yeah, and something else happens. Completely different, he says. He's been all over the United States for this stuff, he was. So, should we, we're going to vote on the uh, on the plan or the. The list of everybody? Oh, on the current list, right? Yeah. Yeah, so what you, what, yeah, so the LEMP is drafted for effective uh, two, um, sorry, four twenty six twenty two today. And that will be uh, signed by Brian um, and then distributed to regional planning as well as the uh, Department of Homeland Security. After that, um, there, there would be just talking to you about a best Saturday type thing with Dawn or how, if she's willing to do that and maybe bring in a, a regional or state person to, to talk or present something, make it a little more interesting. Yeah. But yeah, the vote is just to adopt the 2022 LEMP. That's all, that's all you need to do. Somebody and, want to uh, move to accept? Francis Hewitt put all them on a drive, all mm -hmm. in pictures. Yeah. I would move, so move. Any second? I'll second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Good job, Matt. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it just struck me funny. Uh, well, you guys, you okay. have it? You guys do have it. There was nobody opposing. I heard everybody. Um, so, okay, so we got that. And then uh, uh, hopefully Don will coordinate um, the, the future meeting and we can all get together and discuss that. And like I said, and it was in the notes, right, Ron, that... Uh, that Roland was going to make pancakes. Yep, I got pancakes down. Okay. Is it in the note that Brian's bringing fancy syrup? It better be fancy. <laughs> yes, there's no other time. I would do it. If you cook the pancake, I would do it. I would just, just to see him, uh, see him in an apron. <laughs> I could do that. How do you do it on a grill, though? That's what I want. I've got the perfect. You got, there you go. And Watson. Yeah, I get him to do it. <laughs> he it. He yeah. it okay. Moving ahead. Um, review the ARPA project list and uh, priorities for expenditures. How are we doing on that, Ron? That is, I'm pulling up the list which we've had posted on the homepage for a long time. Um, uh, last update I have is way back uh, end of September. So at the end of this month, April 30th, I have to report to the US Treasury uh, what expenses we've had uh, using ARPA money. We haven't had that much. Some of the projects that we added um, as goals, um, like fiber at the town office has been paid by savings in the phone bill or I, I did a little Wi-Fi upgrade at um, the town office and that, you know, paid by the town office building repairs. Uh, one of the invoices in your pile tonight is for NEMRIC to add a uh, planning and zoning module, which is their software program to uh, basically a database uh, to get the planning and zoning permits scanned and put on the website. So that is totally 100% ARPA to, um, keep people from needing to visit for that purpose. It's one of the last reasons that um, we need to have paralegals and, and attorneys come into the office is to look at planning and zoning files. 
So other than that, uh, we do have a big list. Um, the person that's presented the best regional request so far is the La Moyle Community House, who's asking for funding. Uh, uh, they have a project to go year round on the, the, house, the uh, shelter. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they've written letters to all the county towns. I, I don't know what the response has been countywide. Um, Kim, Kim, uh, what's her last name? Katzinger, I think, uh, is doing the fundraising and she, she could provide a sub, you know, report to you at some point, if that's going to be an eligible project that you want to consider. Uh, but at, at any point you could start approving projects. Uh, I think the intention of these meetings, which is your extra in quotes meeting uh, on the second Tuesday of the month uh, was was to talk about these things and start to set priorities and give obligations. You have to obligate 100% of the money by December 24. So that's about two and a half years from now. What's the total money? 741,000. Uh, the Moyle Community House request was for fourteen thousand eight thirty nine. It was on here. It's only twenty eight hundred bucks. Yeah, that's the village request. <laughs> oh, okay. She clarified that with me, so that's why that that the one that's posted on the website needs to be updated. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have a new one that I have haven't posted yet. So. Oh, okay. That'll show the 14,839 for the community house. Okay. The rest of them uh, that we have on the list are all sort of internal town or recreation, stormwater, fire station. Um, we do have one project that Amy Olson has been pushing a little bit and part of it's just not me having time was trying to combine the HVAC at the library with town office and garage and get that all done under one project. We've been sort of waiting to see if we can get the garage buttoned up first, which I think we're making good progress on. So at some point we're gonna call it good with the town garage. And that's probably the time we'd want the HVAC to be uh, fitted because part of that design will have to deal with the capacity of the building to hold air. <laughs> Um, so anyway, that's that would be the next big project, which would be uh, presented through a bid process and back to the select board uh, as a one combined project, hoping that people want to bid on a bigger project than small projects. Small projects have a hard time attracting people, as we found out. Yeah. So I don't know how you want to actually tackle this project uh, or list. Um, we could. I think. You know, Ron each Yep. I, just, I think it would be because everybody's facing the same thing. And of course, you know, some of the, you know, places like Burlington, big, big communities are putting are taking the opportunity to put a lot into affordable housing and that sort of stuff where we're not, we're not, you know, small communities. We don't have that kind of money, but I think it would be part of it, I think, is just worth waiting to get some ideas of what other communities are, you know, are doing and to realize it's an it's easy. I think it's well for me. It's easy to come up with a list of how to spend money here, short-term things that you can do, but it's an opportunity with some money to think long-term. So you know, what are some investments you you know we might want to make that I you know, and I I don't even well that's not I, one of the uh, an opportunity. All right, could be. It's not that it is. But you know, John and Judy Kaiser want to retire, and that that corner lot. I bet you they would sell it to the town at a reasonable price, and the study's been done. So you know, for for brownfields and all that stuff. The they, 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 yeah. Too. Well, well, or you just have that, and if you take that down, and if you think again, if you think long term, there's always when they're doing something in town. Again, as we think of trying as the. And, and now that we have a restaurant back in town and thing, you know, but when they're doing things at the library or they're, you know, or they're doing things in the village and the courthouse is doing something that people always want to use that space as well. 
you know, and if you took that building down or, and you could use it for more pleasant parking, I mean, I, you could potentially do it for a whole bunch of stuff, you know, but that's, a, again, I just thinking those sorts of opportunities around the community that, you know, now I wouldn't want to go to the voters and say, you know, you want to spend a $120,000 doing this and turn it into something nice. And, and again, thinking long-term as the village becomes hopefully more walkable as people are doing more as, as again, as the rail trail is finally getting done, yeah. you know, this, this summer, you know, before COVID hit, when we did that, um, when, when we worked with the library and, and it came you know, out of the, out of the better places grant, and we did the historical stuff all over town, people loved that, you know, people, people, visitors loved it. The locals loved it. Um, people were walking their kids through town and reading those things and you know and we gave away here you know when you fill it all out and took it into the fork and gavel you got a $20 gift certificate you know it helps them too but just to think of slowly but surely that village is coming up to speed it really is a lovely place you know so so <coughs> there's the, um, and I think the village has some money too which is have you heard anything about the old Peach Edward building through <clears throat> MSI. He, he's the, he's always buying things and coming up with great ideas, and then it doesn't get very far. <laughs> I think no, the man's I, over I, know, I know they were I doing some work there because that, they had a great big. Oh yeah, they ripped. They were ripping the whole insides out and everything upstairs. else. And I and I thought I had no that the um, that the Lamoille, you know, justice system was thinking of um, taking some of that space. So is the school the district office was. Are they? Well, it wouldn't surprise me, right? They're building that old that they've got, yeah. Yeah, shut down. I don't know. Yeah. <coughs> well, most of those old buildings have asbestos in them. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. And then, and that just turns into a whole cost. So there's the whole, yep, right, okay. Yeah. But uh, just a whole you know, variety of those of those sorts of things. And that was the year and we did lots of fun things on the sidewalks and did games on the sidewalks and a couple of things. Again, that just get people what interested in coming Hurst into the stuff? village. The village owns that. The village owns that. Okay. Were, I knew it was donated. I couldn't remember if it was town or we're gonna tear it and rebuild it and turn it into offices and that's the last I ever because that's uh, not which building Dr. Dr. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah well, <laughs> well yeah yeah they were going to make their offices and they were going to move into the village so that's and still a, <clears throat> that's empty uh-huh well well and it's it has Slightly. way back well it, i'll be amazed if it doesn't have asbestos but uh, also was already having some real mold issues well, it's been a a, a, a former say. select board member was sort of did a did a tour of it and checked it and said, oh, they've got some problems there. Well, it's, well, it's you, know, uh, you know, you can't have it. Empty you don't out. think it would exactly. be closed up. You don't think it would be feasible to see if Grand Mink would be addressing anything over here? I mean, there's three, four properties over here. He's if we, interested in we can get into, yeah. you know. Well, again, but a lot of that stuff is in the village. So we'll go back to now we're going to oh, get the right. grant. So how do you come up with? you know, getting out of the way so that things are affordable and, and you can do it. You know, I mean, they, there are several houses in that in the village that like if you snap them up. Place. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of great places. You know, that you that you really could do something Mrs. with. Mrs. Moulton. Yeah. Which one's that one? Up across from um, Rhoda, uh, not Rhoda, but uh, Kevin's mother there. Thomas mother. Oh yeah. Uh, across the road. Yep. Just above the steam. Yeah. So I, but again, I think that's these are the sorts of conversations that it might be, you know, one of these meetings we say, oh, okay, let's have pizza for supper and <laughs> you know, and just sit and talk about yeah. you know, um we've now you know, we're we're buying the the property from Minash. You know, there's a long time before anything can be done with that, but thinking about what you know what what Potential you can you future. can do well, yeah and and i've got an update on that, that later on well why don't we do that at our because our first meeting of the month is supposed to be to do that maybe that's i what think we is do. that our second one <coughs> it on doesn't our, matter ron did you ever reach out to um we plan to talk um yes pizza. mark um what the heck's his name one that owns that lot up there above the post office 
Oh yeah, the Marquee? hole in the ground. Marquee. Marquee Did hole. you ever yeah. reach out to Marquee about that? Because I know I had I had a complaint on that three months ago or so. I I had I I talked with Marquee a couple of times you did. about it, and you know, was he interested in selling and. No, I didn't seem particularly interested in selling and he didn't know and, you know, but again, that's another, there, there are a couple of pieces of property that if we could get them at a reasonable price would be ultimately thinking long term, it's going to be, you know, and of course, I, when we were looking at that, we we're thinking, you know, if you filled that in, you could do some nice parking there yes. because there's your entry into the, into the forest and that, that wonderful all up back there that nobody knows exists. You know, so again, if you think long term, you're, you know. I think we should have a, a work on first a plan of what what we could put in to make sure that it meets whatever we purchase, whatever would meet the need of it. I mean, we got to find something that's going to really bring people into this town, like you said, with that rail trail. We got to have something that'll uh, attract them up here, come up the hill to, to come to the, and then advertise it down there towards the rail trail. So well, they'll, the, they'll see. The restaurant was a big start. Oh yeah, right? and that was definitely sure. pulling people up. Right? Agreed. Right. Yeah. And I, I think, I think two sons is here to stay. I do too. Just because they already are a successful business, and this is just a branch, and they've got good wholesale, you know, behind mm -hmm. them, and they are. They're busy. They are. Every time I drive by. Yes. Yeah. 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 This is Have great. you been in? Oh, yeah. 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 Penny and I want to, but we yeah. get to, she yeah. asked about it the other day and yeah. we got to get down there. You need to go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they have a lot of good baked stuff. Mm, yum. <laughs> Walk in the door and put on five pounds and haven't even bought anything. <laughs> I, I can do that really. Yeah. 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 really. I'm the Penny and you can pay for it Saturday. <laughs> there you go. It's going to be a big tub of pancake mix. I don't know for that too. Hold on. But anyway, just some time to, to do that and to think, and again, because we've we got plenty of time for committing it and to get some ideas of what other, particularly smaller communities, you know, the big communities, oh, good, let's invest $2 million on, well, terrific, right. okay. Well, that's, that's not, on, on, on smaller scale, what we can, can we do? And maybe there is something we can do to help with affordable housing. I mean, I know, I, I, I have right. no idea, but, you know, we sort of begin, if we every couple of months sort of swing back to this kind of a conversation, well, I think we'll slowly but surely end up with a list of things that make, you know, that that makes sense. I know here's Matt's being quiet, but you know, thinking about what do you do to help with the youth and sports and all those sorts of things, you know, to really make Hyde Park a family friendly community. Okay, well, what are what are some of the investments that that we want to do that you know that that make that? Here's a Here's an opportunity to think long term about that stuff. Especially as more so grows and we become a. Uh, yes. Oh, that's, a bit, that's why it was running through my head. And Marshville, Marshville's out in front of this stuff where we seem to be stagnant. But. Yeah. And we're, we're going to get stopped eventually. Yeah, but they got two, two developers over there. I mean. Oh my God, they're going crazy. Yeah. yeah. You know, you got to. Bring in Graham, or you got to bring in Don Danza. Yeah, exactly. And talk to them. Yeah. Another I mean, one. Don really... Danza has got one up North Lake Park, right? Oh, he is doing one up there. Well, he he's done some up there on on the um, road we were on Saturday there. Yeah. Oh up yeah. There to the right. Yeah. Yeah, you told me. Yeah, oh, that was him. Okay. Yeah. Another one who probably we could pick. More his, pick, no. pick his brain would be. Uh, Howard, Howard would be really good about uh, uh, offering advice um, to uh, how to improve the, the village and draw people in and stuff like that. He's must have been involved with literally hundreds of conversations over the years around that. And he spoke to us yeah. about um, different things, different suggestions yeah. he had, and they uh, came true, you know, that type of thing, <clears throat> how he could, that foresight that he has up there. Mm. Yeah, but we'll at least start the conversations. I guess that's that's sort of where we are. Yeah. Okay. Start so, yeah. Thinking yeah, on start, our own. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Talking to people. Yeah. And that money needs to be but spent by December 2024. Right. 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 Because I know, like Susan's mentioned, sitting on this stuff, but if, in my experience in the past, somebody else's budget runs out. 
Yeah, we have we have half the money which came last uh, fall, last midsummer, last early last fall, and the second half is due in by June. And of course, and there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that you cannot spend it on too. You know, it's like if you, if you got a hole in your budget, that's your problem. That's not right. this money's issue, right? Yeah. This is this is looking at making things better. So maybe next, uh, it's the first meeting of the month that that would be appropriate for. So we put that on the agenda and kind of keep it moving. And so it's always there on the front of our minds to figure out how it's going to move forward. Yeah, the, the other option uh, to get to Susan's point of what are people doing kind of thing. I, I thought VLCT had, but I can't find it, started to collect project in Vermont that are being done. So I could reach <laughs> out to that. I could reach out to them to see if they have a good sort of status report from Vermont. Uh, there is a national US Treasury website showing where all the money is being spent, but it's a huge database, very complicated, a lot of multi million dollar projects. And you'd, you'd really have to know what you're looking for to just get some comparable small town manageable projects. But I'll see if BLCT has one. They, they took a bunch of ARPA money just to fund an ARPA office. <laughs> so they should be able to answer a question about if they're. Yeah, what are they, people doing? Right. Yeah. And they should be able to answer that question, but we'll see. Was it just written on, a, on something that people looked at it? And then, or is there anything like that, that they've done as far as the historical aspect of the town? Oh, um, yeah, we had it all someplace. Yeah. Yeah. We've gotten, of course, the library was great at doing that. And, and, um, and, and, and again, that's we got into thinking once COVID hit. That, that was so popular that doing we saved those and we had it but we thought about ultimately you do something that you could drive all over the town and do it yet people recover bridges and oh, old schools and all that sort of stuff because yeah. every, everybody's got their iphones you know and you go up and scan your little thing and you know you can have a yeah. code on it or yeah, you yeah, just exactly. scan it yeah and yeah it comes up on your thing but uh we could do like what Will and i did and we went around morrisville and uh put up all these plaques that were out in front and uh, they were on a post and you had these plaques and explain the history of the of the place they're still yeah. there they're still okay. there in, right in right. Morris right. we, uh, we did we did the temporary and, and they, they did a line was a green line yeah, yeah. all the way up the sidewalk <coughs> and stuff and it was just yes. to follow that yep. to, to where to go to, to find uh, these yep. different spots and we and we put that great big huge map up on the back side of the old train station there and that that was a map so people could actually had a visual to see it when they were coming through uh, uh, town and it gave them direction on how to do it. I thought it was a really good idea. Yeah. And we could do the same thing here. Yeah, we did. We down at the <coughs> trail and, and up at the town. We had maps yep. made. Yep. Here's was you took it and you filled it in as a little questionnaire mm -hmm. so that you get folks doing it with their kids. The only bad yeah. idea with that. He built that sign and we couldn't get it out of his garage. <laughs> Forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> built the sign inside. We want to try to get it out. Okay, we'll start getting some more information. So that'll be on the agenda for, <coughs> you know for next month. For. Yeah, May ten May tenth is your next meeting. Okay. Susan, you said you had some more time once you get off me a chair. I know what you could do. Yeah. Find out about Lorette Cousin's place. Who's got that? Look yeah, what you might see it. Yeah, I can. See if we could start the ball rolling. That's looking terrible. Yeah. Well, I think I think both of those <clears throat> both of those places are are in foreclosure with banks. Yeah, but and and you can't you can't we've tried with the companies you can't get them to answer you. You can't the banks don't care. But I'll get when when Ron gets back up we'll talk. I'll, I will I'll put that on my start seeing how crabby I can be at people. <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. I'll call you Gloria. <laughs> That's what she did in work, and that she got stuff she, done. She did. That's I remember true. getting donuts and stuff there when I was a kid. And that place was a mac. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, we were talking about her donuts today at work. Yeah. <laughs> Those were good. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Received 2022 oh. zoning amendments from Planning Commission. Start one year clock to adopt. 
Okay, so the Planning Commission had a public hearing last Monday, um, the 18th, and they voted to adopt a set of set of uh, amendments that were finalized by them back in February. They adopted it on mo last Monday. Part of the statutory process is you you receive it. It was just attachment to your email notice for the meeting, and your next step is to, uh, you have all sorts of options. You could think the planning commission went off the rails and fired them. That's one, one option. Some, some towns have done that, which <laughs> we don't usually have that relationship between the select board and planning commission, but they did do due diligence and spent some time and came up with a pretty good set of bylaw amendments. Now, the select board is the double check, so to speak on that. And I don't recall any major uh, discrepancies or di issues between the two boards over the years. Maybe, maybe there was at one point, but not in my last you know, 11 years or so. So I don't want to say it's a rubber stamp, but um, if you don't have any changes, then what you would do is hold a public hearing and adopt the planning commission's recommenda recommendations as the new Hyde Park zoning bylaw and that becomes effective 21 days after your vote. So the first choice is, um, do you want to push those forward to a public hearing? Do you want to take time to look at the bylaw amendments? Uh, you have a year, it's a statutory year, but I guess it's a little flexible based on some case law. But I think it's a, it's a respect thing so that the select would actually take some action up or down. If you voted down, you're supposed to send a report back to the Planning Commission why so they can make amendments. If you make minor tweaks, you don't have to go back to the Planning Commission. You might have formatting change or a word change. If there's substantive changes, uh, then you still need to make a report and put the Planning Commission on notice. Um, and if you make big changes after your first public hearing, you're supposed to have a second public hearing. So those are all the little things that you could do. Um, what I've seen happen most of the time is the planning uh, select board pushes the um, planning commission proposal to a select board hearing, waits for any public comment or your own comment, and then generally closes the hearing and adopts it starting that 21 day note um, effective date. Needs 15 days notice for your hearing. So you couldn't practically do it until uh, maybe your second May or your first June meeting uh, just due to the notice requirements. So yeah, we should schedule it for that second meeting in May. Uh, yeah, let me check the calendar. That's the... When's our next meeting? Uh, no. no. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah May yeah, it'd be May 10th and May 24th. So there's there's enough time to get it in the paper for the 24th. Uh, the planning as, commissions? What's that? The planning commission, when's their next meeting? May 9th. May 9th. Right? Second yeah. Month. Yeah, May 9th is their next meeting. Okay. But they're they're done with their on this topic, they're done with their business. they they basically turned it over to you guys to make a decision to move it forward or send it back. So we can wait till May, uh, the second meeting in May, May 24th, 24th. Anybody else? Sure. <coughs> yeah. 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 Right Matt, how do you, what do you think? Matt, get out of the ocean. <laughs> I'm, I'm neutral. I'm, yeah, I mean, I think we should go over it the 24th. That sounds fine to me. I mean, okay. I, I want to be educated on the topic before I say here and hey, obviously. Right. So it's a vote, a vote to accept the February 14th, 22 
Planning Commission proposed amendments and moved to a public hearing on May 24. That's the full motion. So moved. Somebody want to do that? So moved. Okay. A second. Okay. Yeah, a second. Motion has been moved and second. Uh, any discussion? No. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? The ayes have it. Okay. Let's see. Minutes is the next one. I've looked at the minutes. I didn't see any discrepancies. Anybody else? No, nope, they look good. No, nope. I didn't. Motion for accept the minutes. I move we accept the minutes. Second them. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody oppose? Maybe abstaining? I'm going to abstain just because I wasn't here for that meeting. Okay. So yep. I thought they looked good, but <laughs> I wasn't here to <laughs> prove it. <laughs> yep. Okay. So Okay, let's see. And the town orders. We've already um, looked those over. Um, let you look at those and then you need a signature. And want me to move on to other business? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just um, one, one quick thing on the warrant there. Uh, yeah. uh, I think Kim may want to print out a warrant with the check numbers, and I think she's been stapling your signed copy to those. So whether she wants you to come in and sign or not, I, I don't think you need to come in and sign just because the check numbers aren't there, but she just wanted to let you know that usually she, in the ideal world, she had a chance to print out a warrant with the check numbers for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be the plan down the road. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So here's that. That's done. Um, I'm going to leave those on the table here, I guess, or is there another place you want me to put them, uh, Ron? Um, well, you can leave them there on the table. Somebody will get them in the morning. Uh, I, I, as long as they're bundled up and signed, signed copies together, they'll, they'll get them. They're, they're here. Yeah, right no now. meetings the rest of tonight or in the morning. So and we've got four signatures on it. So perfect. So, yeah, we're good. So okay. other business, um, I know Roland wanted to mention about the GPS for the town equipment, and I want to uh, also give everybody an update on uh, the Menashe land up in Garfield. So go ahead, Roland, you got the floor. I got the floor. I, I didn't get a hold of Mark. That's my fault. <clears throat> I didn't know he'd probably be on tonight. Um, as far as I know, we could do it the next meeting. Ron could get all the mark, or I can get all the mark, and have him on so we can hear his side of view in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's to do with the GPS on the trucks, mounted yeah. on the trucks. And that was a couple yeah, months ago. We right, because oh. didn't we kind of all like that well, idea? Well, Ron, Mark, <laughs> Ron, if I'm not wrong about this, Mark was supposed to get with Mark and Ryan, right? And they were yeah. supposed to with the guy and go over it. Yeah, the way we left it as I I had a conversation with Ryan and Mark, and we we're just going over the mechanics of trying to get it done and have it like a pilot project. And uh, I, I think the costs were pretty reasonable. That's I think where you guys left it, that the costs weren't a huge burden. And we didn't quite know how it was how the information was gonna be managed and who would have access and just all the mechanics of that. And I said, you know, Mark, if you, if you guys want to try it out and see how it works and let's, let's get that going. And here's the Verizon contact person. And, you know, you can report back to us. We don't need to hand help, you know, handhold you through this process. It's going to be a tool that benefits Mark the most and probably me second <laughs> for grant reporting and things. Um, and, you know, it, we just know I haven't had an update for a couple months that's all so I don't know where it's at and I didn't talk to him and if Roland and I can get in touch with Mark before the next meeting we can get a either have Mark 
Mark usually, I think, is planning on coming to those first um, Tuesday, you know, the first Tuesday one, uh, which is more like the business meeting than this planning meeting. Um, so, whatever we can, we can follow up with them. As far as I know, nothing's happened since the conversation that you all had. We'd we'd have to put that in the budget to fall anyway. It wouldn't take effect right off. Uh, well, the costs were about what twelve hundred a year, so I think somewhere in the highway budget, the money is available. Yeah, the money was in the highway. Yeah, I think we decided okay. that. Okay. Sort okay. of like yeah. We so I think we'll get, we'll... I think I think the issue for the guys was, you know, were, is everybody going to have access to the information? So no. are we going to turn into a whole bunch of micromanagers? No. And right. I think your thing was no, you know, um, the. It's Mark, more to Mark do. needs it, Ron, your town administrator needs it. And right. that's really if we want to know and I think that can get into your into the sort of reports we end up asking for every month. Exactly. You know, which as much as is there anything weird that looks on that as opposed to having to look at it ourselves. Like an ice storm or something. Somebody said they weren't out there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You exactly. know if the trucks were moving, they were out there. Exactly, exactly. You know, and that's you, get exactly. Into an you know what's going yeah. on. But yeah. Yeah. They're the only ones that need it is Mark and Ron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just I that's think, what I agree. No, well, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. That, and they were like, oh yeah, okay, well, yeah. So Ron, yeah. They, the, um, just to make it kind of simple, they put a device on the truck, and that emits a signal uh, through satellite or whatever, and uh, and then it comes back to a computer, and then you can track them on that, right? Yeah, there's a couple of databases that are created um, that you can um, have, which is, you know, the one is the is the constant GPS so that you know the location and timing and speed of vehicles, which is really helpful when there's an insurance claim, for example. Um, and then you can have the historical data, which I think stays on for a while, then it gets deleted. So it's not like a forever database. It's what like, okay, let's maybe have a six month storage or something. And by then you'd know if you need the data or if it can just be deleted. The GPS mapping part, which is where you have um, locational database, which I think is getting pretty darn accurate these days. Um, if you had a report of a vehicle off the road and the radios are out, you potentially could you know locate your vehicle and your person that way. So there are some little little tweaks to it. I think the operational ma management is the other database, which is how many hours was the truck operating, how many was it sitting, those kind of things. And that's a different le level of database that a manager could use to make sure the equipment's being used. If you're not, if you're using a piece of equipment ten percent of the time that you thought, all of a sudden, then you might should, maybe should rent that thing and stop carrying it as a capital item. You know, hey, Matt. Yeah, we have this stuff at work. Okay, I wondered, how does it work with you guys? Um, it, it takes man hours to watch it. That's what it comes down to. I mean, it, it, the bigger thing for like the trucks would be like the G-forces and stuff like that. You can see if the guys are driving recklessly and stuff like that. But I mean, it, it more, we use it for our idle hours on our equipment. Um, like Ron was saying, you know, you get a guy in the grader and if there's eight hours of idle time on the grader, you might, might be able to say, hey, a whole lot of idle time or whatnot, you know, so. Yeah, I think, time, we, I think time is money. a complaint on idling one day or over getting a coffee. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They I, left it running. I know I got a couple of them when I was there. Left it running more than 10 minutes. Oh. Yeah, and, and the other thing is you might, you might find your guys are, I don't know, strong home or something for lunch or who knows, you know, it's, it becomes a few headaches here and there for sure. Um, on the private side, obviously we can manage that differently. But, and I think Ron mentioned it, there, there might be tiers to the cost of this. So I guess just figuring out what we want out of it. Right, right. Hmm. Any more on GPS? Um, I sent um, or I called over to Minosh Corporation or talked to Howard and uh, to try to talk to Howard and I left a voice message and uh, a week went by and finally I got a call back and I'm trying to remember the girl's name upstairs, but uh, uh, she said she's talked to uh, talked to Howard about it and Howard uh, 
still hasn't looked over the proposal and uh, in that uh, he'll uh, get back to me shortly. That's the way there was a voice message that was left uh, to me. And so uh, um, that's well, what I'm- I, I remember he said when we were talking to him that the, these small things, you see what he already deals with, but these small things, his regular lawyer is so busy that he was gonna to need to find a different lawyer to deal with these little things. That's true, yeah. <laughs> so, did you, is, did you, uh, were you here that night or were you on vacation when it comes down to the footage in the pet? How much would be, you know, be able to use out of it because of the road location and then housing and that type of thing has to be, you know, you know, that type of thing. That's the big thing. Water is a big thing for the houses. And uh, sure. it yeah. turned out to be, what was it, Ron? When you put equipment in there, it goes from 250 feet to what was it? Ungodly amount of feet, remember? Roland, don't go taking my future ball field location away. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta really stop and think about this. What do you, yeah. what do you, what's your 258 it might, it might number? Great for a ball field. <laughs> Yeah, but do the taxpayers, everybody, want to pay that much money to have that for a ball field when you already got one? <clears throat> well, I, I I've, think been, I've been thinking about this pretty heavy. Yeah. And when you start putting the footage that you lose in the pit because of everything's there, is it worth the money? Well, I don't. See, I think a lot of people supported doing that because it wasn't committed as a gravel pit. There yeah. are a lot of people that if you had gone, this is a gravel pit, they would have voted no. Well, the, that's what it started the, out at, to be. At the, at the, at the feasibility. No, yeah. I have right along, I'm very clear and everything in writing said that that was a possibility, but it was well, an I opportunity to for the town to own it. And we got, because of the Act 250 stuff that's on it, we got plenty of time to figure out what we want to do. And if worse comes to worse, we can just turn around and sell it again. We don't we don't have to do anything with it, but it's a it's a great piece of property. Um, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing. With yeah, that. yeah. So, you know, so you got again, but, we don't have to rush into what some, we're doing. Somewhere now. along the line, when it first was talked about, it was talked about as a gravel pit. Roland, you always talked about it as a gravel pit. No, I wasn't the only one. You called Dave Gone. Yeah, Dave, yeah Dave, that's Dave could be. It. And and I wasn't always talking about it as a gravel pit. So and if you look Ryan, at everything we wrote about it, and a lot of people there. Ryan, I'm I'm concerned in one regard uh, uh, regarding the I don't know if it's a delay or or inability for Mr. Manash to uh, review the purchase and sale agreement. Uh, we spent some time and effort getting a pretty a decent PSA uh, drafted by the town attorney to make sure that it checked all the legal boxes we had to check. Uh, he's had that for over a month now, maybe, I mean, at least a month, maybe. And do you, we, we know that uh, Sundog Agriculture is getting ready to sell their um, old Emerson pit to uh, Harrison and Sundog is also interested in turning that those proceeds into money to buy the 25 acres from Howard. So how do we make sure that the, the town's interest in the purchase of the 25 acres is sort of pursued a little more aggressively do that timetable that I just explained? Um, I don't know if that means asking the town attorney to follow up with Minash and see, you know, from a legal perspective, what can we do more to make that speed up? I don't, if, if I, if you get a purchase sale agreement from somebody, you don't have to do anything with it at all. You can just sit on it and say, yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. And then all of a sudden a better offer comes. I just don't, I don't know what the, what more we could do to respect sort of the, the voters wanting to approve funding for that. Yeah. And it put more energy into it somehow with the town attorney is the only thing I could think of, but that, that's just me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do now, other than the fact that I know the timetables are getting pretty slow with the, with that permit that Harrison needs getting closer to being issued. 
mean, if this was anybody other than Howard, we would have called the attorney. So, I mean, true. let's be yeah. real, right? Yeah. But because yeah. it's Howard, we're not, but maybe we should legally? I don't know. I feel like it's the right thing to do. It is. Yeah. 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 I mean, if it was me sitting on a well, purchase and sales, you guys would have an attorney call me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Well, and if something has changed and he doesn't yeah. want to do it. And he it. doesn't want to say, I mean, we got to, yeah. 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 We don't have to do it. Yeah. I didn't know if there's something uh, that upset him potentially with the PSA that the town attorney no, could fix. Oh, no, I doubt it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying, but the, yeah. the town attorney might have an answer to the concern, but Howard's not expressing it to anybody because he doesn't have an attorney yet. Right. So based so, on my, uh, my, if, if, if he had something he wanted to say, he'd tell you. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> based on my past history of working with Howard, I would suggest the attorney myself. I think I would yeah. um, next meet when Mark comes, Ron, could he get some numbers of how much <clears throat> material we took out of that pit in the last since we owned it? Is there a way to do that? I know there is. <clears throat> but um, just figure out how many more years that they got before they would get to the ball field where it is now. Yeah, we've got a we've got an annual report that we submit. So we're doing less than the maximum. Um, we got twenty two thousand yards a year on our permit from Act two hundred and fifty, and it's running about ten to eleven thousand a year. the The lifetime of that pit, based at twenty two thousand, was uh, 70, 90 years. I think was the the number if everything was good. The problem that we're running into is that um, the quality of the material de de depreciates, I guess you want to call it, as you move to the south. So what material are you interested in will determine how quickly you want to move to the gravel pit, um, to the ball field. So if uh, um, it's, it's somewhere around when I was up there last time, it was somewhere around 15 years, I think, if I remember right. Yeah, I think we're, we're probably 30. 30 years in uh, under the under the ball fields is probably another 30 to 40 years. So you have that middle ground that we're at now, which is moving. Oh, that's, south. that's thinking now, another 30 years. Based on the current yeah. usage. Yeah. And, and the core samples that we talked about uh, in the ball field and uh, on the <coughs> purchase property, um, would give us a better idea too of what our projected future. Yeah, was. we were going to do that as soon as the PSA was approved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess do you need a motion to have some our lawyer follow up with? No, Howard? I don't. I don't. Th I don't think so. This, I mean, real estate purchasing is utterly up to the board to decide when to do it, how to do it. You're talking about it in public, which is good. Uh, you could just say that you've reached out and there's uh, no purchase and sale agreement. Uh, response yet from Howard. He's still working on it, but maybe the town attorney can give him a call and just say, hey, I'm, <laughs> if you have any concerns, let me know. I'm reaching out to see if we can, you know, not necessarily speed it up, but make sure there's nothing uh, blocking uh, a decision from Howard. So do you think I ought to hold off since um, the secretary said that he would reach out to me in a week or so? Yep. Well, what, what, is, that, is that the end of it? Is that the end of this week, Brian? Yeah, or, yeah, um, yeah. He called last week, so it would be the end of this week. Yeah, why don't we do that? Let's let's wait, and then if uh, you get a, a no response by Friday or by by Monday morning, give me a call, and we'll we'll get the town attorney to give him a call too. Okay. Something like that. Not it's it's. I don't, I don't, I'm not suggesting we do a high pressure thing. Just a more like hey, <laughs> hey. Just a nudge. That's yeah. all. Just a nudge. Yeah. So I'm sure in all the things he's dealing with, this is like, as he said, he's a lawyer to deal with the little things. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the per usually uh, there's no consideration between the two parties, so there's not really, really even a clock ticking like there would be if there was a real PSA. It's just right now it's the, you know, a word of honor type of deal. Yeah. Yeah. And I would... Uh, if I was to go over there and talk to him, I, I would also I'd like to ask him about seeing if he'd be interested in uh, 
uh, some of the future planning for uh, the town of Hyde Park too. I think he'd be a wealth of information if he wants to go that avenue. Oh yeah, I just, he he's a great conversationalist. Um, he really he really does love Hyde Park from my conversations with him. It's really it's really neat to talk to him. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any other business? So, motion to adjourn. Second. So, yeah. Second. <laughs> <laughs> all, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Have a safe trip home, Matt. Yeah. yeah.